In this video, we are going to talk about online proctoring. It is when you are taking an online examination or assessment from a remote or a distant location. So via the internet, you are monitoring the students, you are verifying their identity, and you are trying to maintain the integrity of the examination. Because in an online environment, students can cheat. They have the opportunity and some of them will avail this opportunity. It is very important for any academic institute to maintain the exam integrity. Otherwise, they will risk losing their reputation. And of course, as a result, they will not be able to make money. In this video, we are going to discuss three important things. The first is what are various methods for students to cheat during the exam? And what are some of the methods to protect this cheating? by using human proctors or by using artificial intelligence based software. So let's get started after a short break. So let us understand how online proctoring works. We will talk about what are the problems and problems basically arise from the ways students articulate their cheating method. And then we will talk about what are some of the tools and techniques used to prevent cheating in online exams. So this video has three important parts. Three main topics are discussed in this video. First is cheating methods used by students in online exams. Then we will discuss how remote human proctoring maintains the exam integrity. And then we will see how an online proctoring tool or software maintains the exam integrity. So first let's talk about the cheating methods commonly used by students. The first method is called impersonation. It's when students arrange some other person to take the exam for them who is a subject expert. The other method is when students talk to someone from their family members or friend and seek help. And another popular method was to use Google to find answers. Then probably the best method from a student perspective who wants to cheat is the ability to use phone. So what they do is they keep the phone hidden or I would say camouflaged within their range. And when exam starts, they get the phone and then it's all easy because then they have many applications using which they can communicate to other friends and family members and they can even get some pictures, images and solved questions as well. Now, this is one of the latest methods that now some applications allow students to share their screens or even give control of their screens to someone else, remote control of the desktop screens. So this is a very powerful method where someone else is controlling the screen of the student and answering the questions. Then they can also hang something on the wall with some important information. Then another very popular method is that they use some advanced electronic devices such as tiny Bluetooth devices and then they connect that device to their phone and they communicate. Similarly, they try to use SD cards, USBs, and very small USBs can be easily camouflaged when the human proctor is examining the environment of the student, which we are going to discuss in a minute. And another very important technique is that students deliberately disconnect from the internet, pretending that the connection is weak. And they get some time because most proctoring tools, they allow some time to reconnect. And during that short period of time, they try to get some important information about their examination. And because some of the proctoring tools, they also check the gaze or the eye movement. So students use few techniques to hide their eye movement by manipulating with the light in the environment. So they change the light levels so that software or humans won't be able to check their eye movement. Then another technique is that they try to find a blind spot for example, near the screen of their laptop or any other blind spot which is hidden from the human proctor because human proctor will be monitoring their environment as we will discuss in a minute and then they put some important information on that blind spot. Then another method is that they try to put a thin layer on their webcam to decrease the sensitivity of the online proctoring tool because those tools work on artificial intelligence algorithms and clear visibility 
makes them efficient but if they blur the visibility just a little bit so the tool might not report an incidence now let's see how human proctor can maintain the exam integrity so there are few things they do the first thing is that they act as a deterrent when students know that someone is monitoring them they tend not to cheat in the exam so this is the basic job of a human proctor then they also verify the identity of the student they ask student to show their identity cards and they try to verify with the information they have and they also use two cameras instead of one one is the webcam focused on the face of the student and they also use another camera which is focused on the environment of the student in such a way that both the screen of the student is visible as well as most part of the environment sometimes they ask students to wear a camera on their glasses which is called wear cam or they can ask student to hang a camera behind them on the wall so they can see the environment then they also ask students to move their webcam in a 360 degree rotation and they check the environment of the student and try to find anything camouflaged or hidden there for example a book or a phone as i described earlier so they can ask students stop here now they say okay move and in this way they scan the environment of the student and then during the exam they continuously monitor the students using two cameras and at one time a human test proctor can monitor around 20 students and they try to find any odd behavior is there any person in the room whether the students are focused on their screens or not so these kind of things then they can also take screenshots and keep record of the things happening sometimes they are also getting some help from the proctoring software and most importantly sometimes some genuine event can happen so in that case they can pause the test as well and the last point is very important to note that the job of human proctor is not to accuse students and now let's see how ai based proctoring tools work so these tools work on various algorithms so these algorithms can be divided into these classes facial recognition where algorithm tries to identify or match the face of the student with the photo on the file or during the exam to verify the identity then they also use voice recognition technologies to detect extra voices then pattern recognition then they also try to model the environment and see if environment changes for example if a person enters into the environment they will be able to detect if they have a model of the environment in their algorithm similarly they have some mouth detection algorithms so if a student is talking to someone they can raise a flag or an alert to the human proctor or they can record this in their system and later a human proctor can review that then they also can detect gaze or eye movements and based on that they can decide that whether the student is looking outside their screen for a longer period of time purposefully to get some information and now let's see what these algorithms do now the early programs were able to only lock the browser or lock the screen so this was the first development in remote online proctoring by any tool so we got tools for locking the screen locking the browser i don't want to mention those tools here but these were the first kind of tools then we got the tools which were able to verify the identity by using these artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithms they can also record audio and video they can detect the presence of another person using the algorithms which we discussed earlier they can also detect sound and raise flag or generate alerts and if there are some flags so what human reviewer or the proctor will do they will see the alert they will note the time and then they will see whether it was the test proctor who was giving instructions or it was some other sound and this is the time where students also want to talk to someone when they are getting some instructions so you have to review it and decide whether students were also talking to someone else at the same time or not similarly these tools can also detect unusual gaze unusual direction in which students are looking and based on their proprietary algorithms every tool differs a little bit 
So they can also have some other flags and alerts in which every tool is different. So you have to look at the individual tool and decide which tool is better than the others because not all tools are same. Some online proctoring tools are very advanced. Of course, they are expensive, but maintaining the academic integrity is critical for any institute. Then these tools can also securely save the files and upload the files to the database and they can keep them with all the privacy requirements. So this job is also done by automated online proctoring tools. So this was a brief overview of remote online proctoring. I hope you find this video useful and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.